Welcome to the next episode of our Champion Data Reviews. Today we have the Schubert E1 Adventure Helmet. The E1 provides a balance of premium modularity with adventure riding features, but how does this mix of the two riding segments do in the real world? We've sent our rider out with the helmet, and they've brought back lots of interesting data. So stay tuned to find out. Sebastian from Champion Helmets here, and the Schubert E1 is going to be a unique option for adventure and touring riders. The helmet is actually based on the Schubert C3 Pro, their top touring modular helmet, but we're getting that adventure style peak as well as changes to the helmet's ventilation. So as far as where the helmet sits on the on and off-road spectrum, the E1 will be leaning more towards the on-road side of things. And this isn't a bad thing either, since if you're mainly doing touring riding and want that modular convenience, and want to keep the option of going off-road, then the E1 is going to be a great choice. What also makes the E1 great is that it is the only premium modular adventure helmet in the market, with the only other one being the Scorpion ADX1, which is coming in at the more entry level. So with a recommended retail price of about 660 euros or 800 US dollars, the helmet will be competing with the Arai Tour X4, Showy Hornet ADV, Icon Variant Pro, AGV AX9, and the Climb Cryos Pro. Before diving into the Schubert helmet, make sure to subscribe to keep up to date on our latest data-driven helmet reviews and road tests. And don't forget, we're the only ones actually doing these sorts of reviews where we bring you back the facts. The Schubert E1 is fully composed of Schubert's strong fiberglass material. This is essentially going to be Schubert's own fiberglass produced through compression molding to make sure you get a low weight and high strength. The only downside as far as material is that the helmet is only coming in two outer shell sizes, which means that fit and weight won't be quite as proportional. In addition to this, the helmet is coming P certified, so it can only be used in the closed position on the road. Nonetheless, it has earned three of five stars from Sharp while remaining shut in 93% of tests. And though 100% is always best, 93 is still better than a lot of other modular options out there. The E1 also uses a micrometric chin strap and is intermediate oval in fit. Last of the helmet did come in at a weight of about 1,680 grams or 3 pounds 11 ounces. For a modular helmet, this is about average, and though it is slightly heavier than the C4 Pro, it is much lighter than the ADX1. Compared to other adventure helmets as well, this is going to be heavier, especially when compared to the Showy Hornet ADV, Arai Tour X4, and especially the Climb Cryos Pro with its amazing 1300 gram weight. The visor of the Schubert E1 is coming pinlock prepared with the anti fog insert provided in the box. It is anti-scratch treated, and triangular turbulators along the top improve the helmet's noise isolation. You get a great field of view, both vertically and horizontally, and you also get a cracked, steady position. For sunny days, you also get a drop-down sun visor with a slider along the jawline, and the peak of the helmet is adjustable with dials on either side, and it lifts with the chin bar when open. To remove the visor, you first need to remove the peak by opening the locks on either side and lifting it off the helmet. You then raise the face shield to the fully open position, pull down on the lever on the side, and lift the visor off. To put the visor back in, you simply remount it so that it clicks in, and then you can add the peak once more. The Okotex 100 interior of the E1 is coming fully removable, washable, moisture wicking, and is antibacterial for high end adventure comfort. It features a cool max element as well, so as to feel cool against the skin. To remove the liner, you can first remove the cheek pads by unzipping the zip, unsnapping them from the neck roll, and threading the chin strap out through the cheek pad, through the anti-roll-off strap, and through the rest of the cheek pad. You then have to do this for both sides. Once you've done this, you can uncouple the cheek pad from the rest of the helmet with a few snaps, and it already looks nice, plush, and well-finished. To take the rest of the interior liner out, you then have to unsnap the back of the crown liner, and then you have a set of forehead inserts to remove as well. The crown liner is well built, and Schubert have also added clever flaps to allow you to direct the airflow through the helmet's EPS for summer and winter riding. With the liner out, you come to the helmet's EPS grooves, of which there are a few to give you adequate airflow throughout, as we will see when we take the helmet out for testing. Last, the helmet is also prepared for the Schubert SRC communication system. Moving on to the ventilation, we'll see how Schubert have managed airflow in the helmet and how well this has worked while riding on the road. First off, the chin comes with two large adjustable vents to bring air onto the visor. In the brow, there is then another large adjustable air inlet to bring in even more air. And when we took the helmet out on the road, it did just that. 
All right, so specs are finished and we can go back to what we do and enjoy best, which is heading out on our data-driven road test to see how the helmet performs. Will the advanced liner keep the wind noise at bay? Will events be able to keep you cool? Let's find out. But before we bring you the results, just a quick reminder for how we set up our road test. On the left, we have a white monitor showing the helmet's internal temperature in degrees Celsius from a thermometer placed between the helmet's EPS and inner liner. In the middle, we have a decibel meter showing the helmet's internal noise level from a microphone placed near our rider's ear. On the right, we have a telephone showing the day's average airspeed on the helmet from a bike-mounted anemometer. Lastly, on the dash, we have our rider's speed and the exterior temperature. We performed our test at 130 kilometers per hour or 80 miles per hour on long stretches of a highway. With our methods over with now, let's check out some of that interesting data. When we tested out the Schubert E1, the day's average airspeed was at a good 120 to 130 km per hour, though we had some gusts of 140. The exterior temperature for the day was about 16 degrees Celsius or 60 Fahrenheit, though the helmet's vents did take some time to cool things down, they did settle to 16 degrees as well. So, thanks to these air inlets and Schubert's unique internal air channel system, there was no difference between the interior and exterior. What does this result mean for an adventure helmet? It actually shows the E1 matches up very well against this premium competition, including both the Climb Cryos Pro and the Icon Variant Pro, which also showed the same interior and exterior temperature result. The E1 also improved on the performances we saw with the Arai Tour X4, which was 1 degree hotter, AGV X9, which was 5 degrees hotter, and the Shoei Hornet ADV, which was 6 degrees hotter to the outside. Evidently, this is a tough category for helmet ventilation, so it is great to see such a strong result so far but we're still left with the question of noise. For noise isolation, we once more got interesting results with a noise level in the helmet of 101 decibels on our meter. How does this compare against the E1's competition? Compared to the Shoei Hornet ADV and Arai Tour X4 with their 102 decibels, it actually does very well. It will also easily beat the AGV X9 and Icon Variant Pro with their 104 and 105 decibels, but this makes sense considering that the E1 is closer to the touring side of the adventure spectrum. Only one helmet came in quieter than the Schubert, which was the Climb Cryos Pro with its 98 decibels, though we're still very pleased with the Schubert's results. Overall, our rider was very pleased with the E1. They found the visor offered a good field of view and as shown with our data, that it was surprisingly quiet. Nonetheless, they did not find the liner to be as comfortable as the Shoei Hornet ADV or its full touring cousin, the Schubert C4 Pro. They also mentioned that the helmet did suffer from buffeting with the peak catching the wind during the test. This is a particularly important factor to keep in mind when going on adventure or touring rides in the winter and autumn. But before we take a look at our final ranking, let's take a look at the helmet's features. Features is a new category that we've started including in our reviews to paint a richer picture of the helmets that we test out. This means we get to take a close look at how much manufacturers put into their helmets. With the E1, we already see a lot since it is coming prepared for a communication system, it is glasses friendly and features a very high quality finish, as is to be expected from Schubert. Another facet worth mentioning here is the added anti-roll-off system or AROS that Schubert have included, which is a special chin strap design to make the helmet even safer. Now with all our data collected, let's see how many stars this actually earns the Schubert E1. For materials, since the helmet is coming with a fiberglass construction in two outer shell sizes, the E1 earns three stars. For weight with a 1,680 gram result, the helmet earns another three stars. However, since the visor is pinlock prepared with the insert provided in the box, the Schubert E1 earns four and a half stars. With the ventilation result of no difference to the outside, the Schubert E1 earns another excellent four stars. At the 101 decimal mark, the E1 also earns itself three and a half stars, since this is actually quite quiet. For comfort, the helmet earned 3.5 stars since it didn't quite match the Shoei or Arai, while for features, it earned an excellent 3 stars. In the end, this brings the E1 to an average of 3.57 stars at 27 euros per star, which is not too bad, but we still need to put the results into perspective by factoring in the helmet's price, seeing how it compares to its competitors, and assigning additional points. After we compared it with the other helmets that we've tested based on their average scores, we have the E1 coming in at third with a bonus of 3.8. This means that the helmet comes out with an overall score of 7.1, which compares it very favorably against the rest of the competition. If we put this result into context, we have the E1 coming in at the same tier as Clam Cryos Pro and the Arai Tour X4, while also bringing its own unique modularity. Compared to the Scorpion ADX1, the other modular adventure helmet, the E1 also stands out even more due to its substantially higher score, 
greater number of features and improved noise isolation. Though looking at the price difference, this stands to reason, and the ADX1 is a great starter option with its Euro per star value of 12. The Schubert E1 may be a bit of an odd one out in terms of its modular design, but it certainly does bring adventure level performance. With plenty of great features built into an already incredible chassis, the helmet does have a lot to offer riders as we just saw during our test. Now if you liked the video, make sure to subscribe to keep up to date on more champion data reviews like these. And if you have any questions, then feel free to let us know in the comments down below or on our live chat on our website. I'm Sebastian from Champion Helmets, and see you next time.